Every employer is going to look for a specific skill set in the employees he chooses to represent his or her company. It's a given, really. No self-respecting road haulage company would hire a bloke that gets carsick, nor would a well-respected accountancy firm hire someone that could count to 17 without taking their shoes and socks off. The scientific industries are no different. So what kind of qualities are they looking for in their staff? The key qualities you need to possess to be a success in this industry is that of the flexibility to adapt to different work environments um, and always show an interest in the different areas of the business. In this industry there's often lots of different projects going on at one time. What we're looking for in terms of uh, quality of application, I, I mean the, the, the usual things apply. Clearly we, we want to see a strong academic track record. We are doing world leading science here. We need people that you know, can contribute to those projects and really be very effective from early on, almost from day one. So we need people that have got a good, good um, standard of, of, of education, good A-levels, um, a good class of degree uh, in a subject that's relevant to us. So we're looking mainly at engineering subjects, physical sciences. Um, so those are the things we're looking for. In addition to that, it's nice to see a bit extra on somebody's CV. So it's always uh, interesting if people have had some, some relevant work experience, for example, or if they've done something a little bit different that uh, you think, well, this person shows initiative. They're obviously somebody that's you know, got some get up and go about them. So things like travel, which you know, so many youngsters do these days, if they've been to some unusual places and they've perhaps done some voluntary work, those sorts of things. So it's a mix of skills we're looking for. The difference, you know, what, what extra have people have done? Um, it's not just the degree that they've done, but it's, it's also who they are, what they do, what they've achieved outside of all of those things. And, and clearly interpersonal skills are, are, are very important, uh, particularly in today's business environment. The ability to communicate with others, uh, to, to make yourself understood and to listen to other people. Uh, the ability to uh, embrace teamwork and still acting as an individual, as, as, a, as a capable, experienced, knowledgeable individual, but also working within teams, uh, multidisciplinary teams, teams drawn from different departments. You know, how do people sell themselves, uh, influence and persuade others um, so that they can achieve both their own personal objectives and also achieve the team, the department, the company objectives as well. Okay, I think a good, a good applicant will be able to demonstrate um, strong uh, technical qualities, um, an, an interest in, in the field that they, they, can, they can demonstrate throughout their, their university career, but also the, the broader aspects like participation in university activities um, and maybe some, some signs that they've actually led various activities or, or, or been uh, positive team members. From the point of view of what I'm looking for, uh, I would say that the successful candidate is going to have good self-confidence. That self-confidence will be born out of knowing that they know their, their topic, their subject very, very well and have additional skills to bring to the party and those additional skills will be tenacity, the ability to problem solve, to analyse and to take a very personal interest in making a contribution to the business. I think the fundamental key quality you need to work in, in any kind of scientific research is curiosity and it's curiosity about science itself so I've been, you know, my curiosity about physics has gradually increased from the age of, I've, as early as I can remember, being interested in stars and astronomy um, to being interested in um, matter and things like nuclear technology and stuff like that. Um, but it's, it's curiosity all the way, it's curiosity that's just enough to keep you learning about it um, so um, all the way through school and certainly through university, it was the, the curiosity that drove me to carry on learning about things. Um, it, it was never really a focus on what I was going to get out of it in the end, it was just that this was what I most enjoyed doing. I think the key component for me is identifying people with passion. Now, for new graduates, we will um, clearly test their skills, test their knowledge, test their understanding of their specialism. And depending on the role that we put people in, that might have a greater or lesser degree of importance. But the thing that all of my team right across Europe will look for is are people with the right attitude. An attitude that says, I don't, know the, I don't know the solution to this problem, but I'll go and try and find one, and I'll go and try and fix it. And that's what we're trying to about. People who don't expect the world to come to them, but who want to make a difference by taking their skills to the world. And you know what? That, for me, is absolutely fantastic. 
if we can get more of those people into the business, um, whether they be in internal functions, whether they be in internal customer sales or external customer sales, that's what will make the difference. Having great technology or great products is only half the issue. It's what you do with it and whether or not you can make a connection at a personal level with the person across the desk or in the factory or um, <clears throat> in another foreign part of the, uh, another, another part of the world where they may not speak the same language as you, but you've got to figure out of, of, of making a connection and that ability to make a connection is key. When we're looking to apply for a job, one of the most important things in the process is a good CV. Broad enough to cover all your skills and abilities, but concise enough to stop the recruiter from chucking it binwards at first sight. It goes without saying that a vital section on that good CV should be the few paragraphs showcasing any relevant work experience you may have picked up along your career journey. So how important is work experience in the scientific industries? Work experience is important, but only to a certain level really. I mean, I, I would be looking for someone who has been out into some um, engineering industries and picked up some level of experience, but it's not vital. I think, I think the behaviours, the willingness to, to learn, the willingness to get involved in, in the community, perhaps not only the company's community, but the wider community, says more about the individual. Uh, so to me, it's a balance. We would be looking for an individual to um, really bring life skills, life learning skills with them, as opposed to just technical skills about the industry. I think work experience is useful, um, and we do offer opportunities to people to, to work um, at vacations. Um, but I would say that a lot of people who come into this industry as graduates gain most of their training in the industry. There are now a few university courses, particularly at master's level, to, to give the, the basics and, and a fairly advanced level in, in uh, understanding of, of nuclear matters. But if you're recruited into, into the company, then we would uh, give you that experience to develop yourself. That's certainly how it worked for me. And you know, we, we would look to, to support people throughout their development. In terms of how people can, can most effectively get work experience in a scientific organisation, I would say that the best way is to, to, to make a contact with somebody there, phone up, speak to somebody and ask what's available. Um, and uh, you know, if that fails, certainly write a letter, send in a, a CV. I think what people are looking for is an indication of enthusiasm and, 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 you know, and keenness for the subject. And, and, and very often that's, that's all it takes to actually persuade somebody it's worth taking somebody in for a period of work experience. For us, we have uh, in the STFC, at all of our sites, we have very strong links with the local schools and colleges and we, we really make a, a very proactive um, effort, if you like, to go out and talk to schools and to forge re relationships and links with children from quite early ages very often. Life experience and work experience is a nice to have. Uh, my background is actually in export sales. I, I've been involved in HR and training and development for about four years now. And uh, my, my background before that, when I moved over from the dark side, was in, was in export sales. Um, in export sales, we always had a lot of people coming to us uh, as an export sales department saying, I speak languages. I speak French, I speak Spanish, I speak German, I speak Mandarin. And, and I always used to think that's a nice to have. Actually, what I wanted as a sales manager was uh, some, an ability to sell things you know, to work with people, to sell things, to be successful as a self-starting salesman. That's what I was looking for. And languages were a plus. It was a nice to have. And I, I kind of view uh, science uh, graduates in much the same way. It's, it's a nice to have. Um, in some areas, it's essential. Yeah? If you're a brain surgeon, you wouldn't want somebody operating on you who wasn't suitably qualified neither in our laboratories or in some of our new product development areas or in some of our other technical areas do we want people working with us who are not suitably qualified. Yeah? But in some areas, for example the commercial areas, it's, it's not essential. I think work experience per se is useful as long as it has got an outcome. If it's just a general uh, getting to know you situation and general administration, general duties, I don't think you take away the most that you can from a work experience.